just a little secret I suppose that um, I'll pass on to you about putting the two Y axis servo motor drives on and that is catch a hold of your gantry pull it all the way to the front ensuring that the axes or rather the the bearing blocks here uh, and actually the plate here is touching the very front uh, supporting plate here or the hard stop okay uh, they should be both touching exactly so then you know that your y-axis is uh, run you know the two axes drives are running absolutely together and you know your gantry is not cockeyed <laughs> okay and it is in that position you mount your two uh, servo drive motors on the back so after you've finished mounting all your hybrid servo motors it's now time to mount the spindle so you have two very heavy duty aluminium mountings so what you need to do is uh, you're provided with eight of these uh, corner angular uh, mountain blocks now let's have a look here okay four holes top and bottom so you put it to the outside holes okay so two top two bottom on each of the brackets and, and to, to attach them you use let me pick up the packet here use your five millimeter by eight millimeter long you'll also have a packet of eight five millimeter thread and 10 millimeter long screws as well as eight of the little uh, lock-in t-nuts so use the 10 millimeter for for these lock-in t-nuts that will attach it to the z axis so we'll just put these on So you end up with something looking like that. Now the top and the bottom is determined by, you notice on here, you'll see that imprinted on there is 80 millimeter. So when that's the right way up, that's the top and the bottom indicated. So then there's a particular way. So there's a bit of a tang on the center there. That goes towards the bracket. Okay, so you get your 10 millimeter long screw, put it on and just put it in a couple of threads, just a couple of turns like that. And do that with all of them. So you should have a total of eight. Okay, now where to mount the brackets on here, the best place to, to mount them with um, an 80 millimeter diameter 2.2 kilowatt spindle okay all the ones that I have built and designed myself uh, I've allowed the underside of whatever bracket you've got to be located 70 millimeters what's that two just over two and a half inches about two and three quarter inches okay Right, so you measure from the end of the thread of the spindle 70 millimeters up. So it's giving you about 12 millimeters of play. What you're after is the maximum Z travel that you can possibly use, then put it that way. 70 millimeters, so 70 millimeter from this end here. 
it's going to be your mark there. And what you need is for the full amount of this thread, which is uh, 20 millimeters, to be hanging down to be below this. Okay, that's fairly comfortable. In, a, in certain circumstances, you can raise it up so the nut comes level with this. You'll need to do that if you're doing um, fourth axis rotary work. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So what you do, you make sure that these T-nuts are north-south like this. And just push it on the slot like that get to our 70 millimeter mark which is about there and just nip it up And if you have used your 8mm screws to screw these little blocks onto your bracket, when you come to put this on there you'll find that you've used the wrong buttons because you need the 8mm long by 5mm to not bottom out in here. So I'm just swapping them all over. Okay, right screws in, no fit. <laughs> yes. You don't got to worry too much about getting it too square. Just get them on there. And we'll worry about squaring them up before we put the spindle in. Now, they need to be approximately 150 millimeters apart. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Okay, to check and adjust whether these are square with everything, you just get two squares on a flat surface. We know the chassis is flat. This is a new piece of board. It's flat. So you just get one square and the other. That top one is bad. Bottom one is about a millimeter out. In other words, this has got to drop down about a millimeter. Like that. So I slackened it off just now. Okay. Yeah, that could do with a little tiny bit of squaring up, I think.
Okay, happy work. So if you're using an impact screwdriver, when you finish squaring things up, always go around it with an Allen key, just to make sure that it is reasonably tight. Don't go over tight them though, they're only little screws. Okay, to make the spindle, just slacken off the clamp screws. Should be enough. Now bear in mind that this is uh, quite heavy, uh, it's around about the probably between 8 and 10 kilos, which is about you know, getting on for 22 25 pounds, somewhere like, somewhere like that. So, I always put a piece of you know, block of wood, you don't want to damage this, you don't want to drop it or do anything like that. And Presented at the top, have the right end facing out towards you, so that means the the uh, coolant screws. Sorry, that means the coolant pipes will be on the back. Just pop it in there. Like, have I opened it enough? I haven't opened it enough. This time we should be right. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so there's our uh, 20 millimeter or thereabouts. And you know, that's in there nicely. And you know, you want about close to the same amount here as what you've got here. And the farther these are apart, the better it will hold it. So let's just knit these up. Undo that one a bit. Okay, when you do your bracket up, there's going to be a gap here on your, your bracket. Just make it roughly the same amount of gap. Don't have it sort of cockeyed like that. Do the same with the top. And there again, get your Allen key. Never trust the torque screwdriver. Make sure she's tight. 